story by Cynthia Ryland. She also writes Henry and Mudge books, if you've seen those in your library. It's called The Old Woman Who Named Things. Okay? And this is one of those books that teaches you a lesson. Okay? And so what I'm going to ask you to do today as you listen to this book is I want you to try to figure out the lesson. Mm -hmm. And one way that good readers figure out the lessons the author is teaching us is that we pay attention to the mistakes that the characters make. Because when characters make mistakes, they learn lessons. And we can learn the lesson when we pay attention to the mistakes, okay? <laughs> so this is called The Old Woman Who Named Things. Once there was an old woman who loved to name things. She named her old car she drove, Betsy. She named the old chair she sat in, Fred. She named the old bed she slept on, Roxanne. And she named her old house, Franklin. Just really quick, we just got in, but tell me what, tell your partner what you've learned so far. Okay, I'm going to ask you to come back to me. Thank you, Pumi, you did that so politely. Thank you. What did we learn? I think that the old lady is naming stuff because, because she wants people to live with her. She wants people to live with her, so she's naming her things. That's a prediction, right? Let's see if that comes true. Okay, and I will call on you with super polite hands. One more. Um, I think she's naming things she sees and whatever, her clothes, her um, dresser, and everything she has in her house. Did you notice she names? So you guys all shared something about she's naming things. Do we know why she's naming them yet? No. Did it tell us why? No. no. I think we I don't know why. Okay, so tuck the reason why in your head. Hold it in your brain. We're going to keep reason. Keep reading, okay? Every morning, she would get out of Roxanne, have a cup of cocoa in Fred, lock up Franklin, and drive to the post office in Betsy. She always hoped for a letter from someone. But all she ever got was bills. The reason the old woman never got letters was because she had outlived every single one of her friends. This worried her. She didn't like the idea of being a lonely old woman without any friends without anyone whom she could call by name. Oh, that's All right. So she began to name things, but she named only those things she knew she could never outlive. Her car, Betsy, had more get up and go than anything around. Her chair, Fred, never sagged a day in his life. Not not one creak or moan had she ever heard out of her old bed, Roxanne. And her house, Franklin, had been standing straight for over a hundred years and still didn't look a day past 20. The old woman never worried about outliving any of them and her days were happy. So right now, think about what you know now. You've learned more. Okay? Talk to your partner about what you know. I learned, I learned, I learned that, that she, 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 she lost her friend because she could have a feeling like she has a friend because if she doesn't get no letters, she's not going to have no friend. So that's what she's naming everything that she's in the room. I kind of agree. She's calling them names because the pe things have faces on them. Okay, fantastic conversation. <gasps> Wonderful. Okay. Can you tell me what you learned? You're sitting so nicely. What do you know now? She made mistakes about 
room for friends. About she made mistakes about li li living with her friends. I didn't know. Uh, moving away. Oh, so maybe the mistake has something to do with maybe why she doesn't have her friends. Yeah. Okay. She doesn't have friends. You're right about that. Who can tell? Who can add on? Maybe she's lonely. She doesn't have any anybody to be with, but just herself. And the way she said that none of her stuff are gonna be outlived. The stuff are actually gonna be outlived. Oh, she was worried about. Can you? Who can add on? Because she was talking about she was worrying about outliving things. Go ahead. I think I know why she's doing things because she outlived her friends and. She knows that she won't outlive any of her, 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 any of her things, so she's naming them so that she knows that, because she knows <coughs> that she won't outlive them because they're not alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying she, I got you. She's naming them because she won't outlive them. She she's outlived, she lived longer. Friends. Outlived means she lived longer than her friends. Okay. You guys have wonderful things to share. Sometimes we'll have to share them with each other. Let's keep reading, okay? One day when the old woman was out soaping mud off of Betsy, telling her that Franklin wouldn't want to be seen with a car that didn't keep its bumpers a little cleaner, a shy brown puppy came to the old woman's gate. The old woman had not named the gate because two of its hinges had rusted off, and she could tell the gate wasn't long for this world. The shy brown puppy wagged its tail. It looked a little hungry. The old woman stood beside Betsy and watched the puppy for a while. Hmm, she said. Then she walked into Franklin, got a chunk of ham from her refrigerator, and came outside. The old woman gave the ham to the hungry puppy and told it to go home. She told it that Betsy always made puppies sick and Fred never allowed puppies to sit on him and Roxanne wasn't wide enough for a puppy and an old women, woman to fit on. And besides all this, Franklin couldn't tolerate dog hair. So the puppy went away. But the next day, the puppy was back. The old woman was sitting in Fred reading a book on everlasting flowers when she saw the puppy through her window. Go home, she called to the puppy. The puppy wagged its tail when it saw her. Go home, she called again. I think that she's going to name the puppy. You think she's... Okay, let's do this. Thumbs up if you think she'll name the puppy. Thumbs down if you think she won't. Okay. Let's find out. But the puppy just kept wagging. The old woman noticed that it looked a little hungry, so she went to her refrigerator. She gave the puppy a hunk of cheese and two biscuits. Then she told it to go home. The puppy went away. He came back. I think he was going to want to live with her. You think he's going to want to live with her? Yeah. Okay. The more she gives... How about some... The more she gives... Or no? What do you think? I think the puppy has no home. It's just going to different places and coming back to the same place. Okay, so the puppy doesn't have a home. You're going to have to wait and see. Hold your thoughts in your brain. I know. I love this because this means you're excited to find out what's happening. That night as the old woman plumped up the pillows on Roxanne, she thought about the puppy. It was a very nice puppy, she thought. It was a very pretty puppy, she thought. But it couldn't stay. If it stayed, she would have to give it a name. And it could never last as long as Franklin or Fred or Betsy or Roxanne. She might outlive it. And she didn't want to risk that. She didn't want to outlive any more friends. She would just keep telling it to go home. She really wants it. Is she giving it a name yet? No. She wants it, but she thinks she can't ever go with the friends. 
<gasps> every cold. day the shy brown puppy came to the old woman's gate and every day she fed it and told it to go home. Always it went away and always it came back the next day. This went on for many months. The puppy got bigger and bigger until soon it wasn't a puppy anymore. It was a dog. And it was still a dog with no name. In all this time, the old woman had gotten a new dresser that she had named Bill, and a new wheelbarrow that she had named Francine, and a new concrete pig for her garden that she had named Bud. But the dog that she faithfully fed at her gate every day still had no name. Since it had no name, the old woman didn't have to worry about outliving it. And she thought herself pretty clever in this. What are you wondering about right now? So when you're wondering, you're asking a question. Then you can turn and tell your partner what you're wondering. Will she keep the dog? Will she not keep the dog? Will she give her them or her name? Okay, come back to me. Okay. I heard some wonderful questionings. I'm just going to ask you a thumbs up and thumbs down question right now to get some a little in more information from all of you. Do you think she's clever for not naming her dog? Or do you think she's not being clever? Clever's like smart and she's doing mm, the right thing. Never. Do you think she is mm, or isn't? No. Uh -uh. Think about why. Wrong. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Then one day the shy brown dog did not come to the old woman's house. She sat in Fred and watched the gate all day long, but the dog never came. And the old woman felt felt sad. The next day, again, the dog did not come. The old woman drove Betsy around town looking for the dog, but she did not find it. And the old woman felt even sadder. The following day, when the dog did not come, the old woman knew she had to do something. She picked up her telephone and called the dog catcher. Have you caught any shy brown dogs? The old woman asked the dog catcher. We've got a whole kennel of shy brown dogs, ma'am, said the dog catcher. Was yours wearing a collar with his name on it? What's no. the answer to that? No. no. No, said the old woman sadly. And she hung up the telephone. Tell your partner what you're thinking about the story. Gonna, like, I think she's, she's gonna, gonna go to the bank and then go into the dog catcher to to get the dog back. No, mine. The dog is mine. Okay, I'm going to ask you to come back. What are you thinking right now? Because good readers are thinking, and I've heard lots of good thinking. And I don't know if you've shared yet, so go ahead. I think that that the old grandma is gonna drop throw away all the stuff that she named and go to and and go to the pet pet thing where they take pets and like put them in the cages. Pound? The pound? Yeah, the pound. Yeah, pound. Then then she's gonna keep the dog and name it. Okay, so you you think that she's going to get rid of her stuff and but keep the dog and name it. I got one. How will she find the dog without a name? I got one. She's gonna run away. You know what I like? I like some of these polite hands, and I want to make sure I give the people who are raising their hand quietly a turn. So in the back, in the overalls, what do you think? She's gonna go find the dog. 
Mm. And a dog of her own. A dog of her own. Maybe a different dog? Okay. I what makes you it. think it'll be a different dog? The name? She doesn't know the name. How will she find it? Okay. That's good thinking. One last one here and then we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. I know, right? Go ahead. Maybe she is going to check and see if the dog has a color or not. And, um, and <coughs> the thing that she named, she probably put a lot of names on the dog. Call it or like put the names and middle names. So you're, she's gonna so she's gonna find the dog. She can find a brown dog that looks like it, right? And she's gonna give it more than one name, like a first, middle, and last name. Yeah. Oh, what so makes I you think that? Because she. Who can tell? Why? Why? Why might she think that? Um. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. I think she's gonna recommend the dog. You'll show right here. If he always goes to the house. Okay, well let's find out. So she'll recognize the dog. How where is she gonna see it? She's gonna recognize the dog. Oh, he always wake up. oh you agree with her that they're going to the pound to find it? Okay, well let's find out. The old woman sat and thought about the shy brown dog who had no collar with a name. Wherever it was, no one would know what was so, no one would know it was supposed to come to the woman's gate every day and that she was supposed to feed it and tell it to go home every day and that things were supposed to be this way. The shy brown dog had no <coughs> collar and no name and no one would ever be able to know these things about it. The old woman made a decision. She locked up Franklin and drove Betsy to the dog catcher's kennels. Yes. She said to the dog catcher, I've come to find my dog. He asked her what color it was. It's brown, she said. He asked her how old it was. About a year old, she said. Then she asked her what its name was. The old woman thought a moment. She thought of all the old dear friends with names whom she'd outlived. She saw their smiling faces and remembered their lovely names. And she thought about how lucky she had been to know these friends. She thought what a lucky old woman she was. My dog's name is Lucky. She told lucky. The dog. I got my dog back. <gasps> Hi, Lucky. He, he led her to a big yard full of white dogs and black dogs and brown dogs. The old woman looked and look. I think it's that one. You guys see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's looking at. Let's see if it knows her. Let's see if it remembers her. Okay. The old woman looked and looked and looked. And finally she saw her own shy brown dog sitting beside a gate. The dog was looking at Betsy parked in the driveway. The old woman called out, Here, Lucky! And at the sound of her voice, the shy brown dog came running. From that day on, Lucky, this is my favorite picture. <laughs> From that day on, Lucky lived with the old woman, and he always called when his, he always came when his name was called. It turned out that Betsy didn't make all dogs sick, and Fred was happy to allow a dog to sit on him, and Franklin really didn't mind a little dog hair. And every night, Roxanne was sure to make herself plenty white enough for a shy, brown, lucky dog and the old woman who named him. So think about the lesson in the story. And I want you to share with your partner. I think that she
did it trying to leave and, and the lady I think it's like, 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 like I think the old lady is she made a friend choice. Was she right for not being a friend? Friend is so lucky because she has only one friend. She lost all of her friends because she got a dog. We changed that. And I would like you to turn back to me. And I'm going to have you, I'm going to have you do some deeper thinking. So I'm going to start. I heard something over here. What did you say? I said that the lesson learned is that you always should make a smart choice before you should be the dog and, and give it like food every single day and make it go away. The smart choice I think you do is to, to give it a collar and a name and let it come every single day. I heard some other people say she learned that she needs to give her dog a collar and a name. And I think you're right. You're right about that. But I want you to think about why she didn't give the dog a name. Does anybody remember why she didn't give the dog a name? Is that, um, Taco? Mm. She doesn't know that dog. She didn't know the dog, and there was more to it. Yeah, she didn't know the dog. Yes? She named too many stuff, so she didn't want it to name that one. She Is that why she did it? Because she named no, too many no, things? No, no. Because her You're couch? right. She named a lot of things, right? Correct. I'm going to have it right here. She didn't want to name it because she didn't want to outlive it. Remember what she said? She didn't want to name it because she didn't want to outlive it. it. In fact, she was a Afraid to outlive it, right? Okay. So think about that, why she didn't name her dog. She didn't name it because she was afraid to outlive it. And she didn't know the dog. Okay, good. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think about the lesson? I think the lesson learned that never... Okay. Never... Um, Never like a mud. I Never um get get a new dog. Never get a new dog. No. Do you think because that's a good dog, lesson? The dog. Oh, the dog you have is a poison in your life. The dog you oh so to keep so she kept the shy brown dog and that's an important lesson to learn. Absolutely. I'm going to ask you guys to have a seat and deep. We just about maybe one more minute. Can you handle that for me? Yeah. Okay. So never get a new dog, right? Mm -hmm. Or keep the dog you have. Yeah, Think about the mistake. Was it right that she didn't name the dog? No. 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 Because no. if she had it, she would have lost it. She could have lost the dog. Right? I'm going to end it right here, and then we'll talk about this. I want to say later. I believe that she should have named it because when she went to the dog pound, the dog didn't know that it, that it was supposed to be named Lucky, so it knew it was her by her voice, not by what she called it. Absolutely. So I have something. I'm, you're absolutely right. The dog loved her. She should have named it. I'm going to ask you this. Did she... Did she need to be afraid of outliving it? No. no. Okay, so sometimes when we're afraid of something, guess what happens? We don't do something. She almost lost the dog because she was afraid. To outlive it. To outlive it. Okay. So what's better? To love and name the dog? Yeah. Or to be afraid of it and not afraid about living it. Love and name the dog. Absolutely. Absolutely.